Session 3 I am Ra. I greet you in the love and light of the one infinite Creator. I communicate with you now. Questioner My first question is, did we correctly perform the ritual for starting the communication? I am Ra. The placement of the artifacts designated to balance the instrument should be placed at the instrument's head for the least distortion of effect. The remainder of the beginning account of purpose is quite acceptable for those speaking desires to serve. Otherwise, the attendant emphasis in mind complexities would not have been affected properly. We caution you to guard against those who are not wishing to serve others above all else from taking part in the beginning or in the lending their distortions of mind, body, spirit complex to any sessions as we should then be unable to properly blend our distortion with those of this instrument. Question. Should I move the Bible, candle, and incense at this time? I am raw. This would be appropriate. Question. After moving the items, is this the proper position? I am raw. Please correct the angle of incense so that it is perpendicular to the plane of 20 degrees north by northeast. Question. Is this satisfactory? I am raw. Please check by eye to make fine corrections. We will explain the process by which this becomes a significant distortion balancer. The incense acts as energizer to the physical body of this instrument, signifying its humanity. This is therefore a necessity that the wafted smoke is perceived from the same relative angle, as the instrument perceives the open Bible balanced by the lighted candle, signifying love light and light love, and therefore giving the mental and emotional, shall we call it, distortion complex of this instrument the sight of paradise and peace which it seeks. Thus energized from the lower to the higher, the instrument becomes balanced as not grow fatigued. We appreciate your concern, for this will enable our teach learning to proceed more easily. Question. Does everything appear correctly aligned now? I am raw. I judge it within limits of acceptability. Question. At the last session, we had two questions that we were saving for this session one having to do with the possible capstone on top of the Great Pyramid of Giza, the other having to do with how you move the heavy blocks that make up the pyramid. I know these questions are of no importance with respect to Law of One, but it was my judgment, and please correct me if I am wrong, and make the necessary suggestions, that this would provide an easy entry for those who would read the material that will eventually become a book. We are very grateful for your contact and will certainly take any suggestions as to how we should receive this information. I am raw. I will not suggest the proper series of questions. This is your prerogative as free agent of the Law of One, having learned, understood, that our social memory complex cannot effectually discern the distortions of the societal mind-body-spirit complex of your people. We wish now to fulfill our teach, learning, honor responsibility by answering what is asked. This only will suffice, for we cannot plumb the depth of the distortion complexes which infect your people. The first question, therefore, is the capstone. We iterate the unimportance of this type of data. The so-called Great Pyramid had two capstones. One was of our design and was of smaller and carefully contrived pieces of material upon your planet which you call granite. This was contrived for crystalline properties and for the proper flow of your atmosphere via a type of what you would call a chimney. At a time when we as a people had left your density, the original was taken away and a more precious one substituted. It consisted in part of a golden material. This did not change the properties of the pyramid as you call it at all and was a distortion due to the desire of a few to mandate the use of the structure as a royal place only. Do you wish to query further upon this first question? Question. What did you mean by chimney? What was its specific purpose? I am raw. There is a proper flow of your atmosphere which, though small, freshens the whole of the structure. This was designed by having air flow ducts, as this instrument might call them, situated so there was a freshness of atmosphere without any disturbance or draft. Question. How were the blocks moved? I am raw. You must picture the activity within all that is created. The energy is, 
though finite, quite large compared to the understanding distortion by your people. This is an obvious point well known to your people, but little considered. This energy is intelligent. It is hierarchical. Much as your mind-body-spirit complex dwells within a hierarchy of vehicles and retains, therefore, the shell or shape or field, and the intelligence of each ascending intelligent or balanced body, so does each atom of such a material as rock. When one can speak to that intelligence, the finite energy of the physical or chemical rock body is put into contact with that infinite power which is resonant in the more well-tuned bodies, be they human or rock. With this connection made, a request may be given. The intelligence of infinite rockness communicates to its physical vehicle, and that splitting and moving which is desired is then carried through the displacement of the energy field of rockness from finity to a dimension which we may call, conveniently call simply infinity. In this way, that which is required is accomplished due to a cooperation of the infinite understanding of the Creator indwelling in the living rock. This is, of course, the mechanism by which many things are accomplished, which are not subject to your present means of physical analysis of action at a distance. Question. I am reminded of a statement, approximately, that if you had faith to move a mountain, the mountain would move. This seems to be approximately what you are saying, that if you are fully aware of the law of one, you would be able to do these things, is that correct? I am raw. The vibratory distortion of sound, faith, is perhaps one of the stumbling blocks between those what we call the infinite path and those of the finite, proving understanding. You are precisely correct in your understanding of the congruency of faith and intelligent infinity. However, one is a spiritual term. The other, more acceptable, perhaps, to the conceptual framework distortions of those who seek with measure and pen. Question. Then if an individual is totally informed with respect to the law of one, and lives the law of one, then such thing as the building of the pyramids by direct mental effect would be commonplace. Is that what I am to understand? I am raw. You are incorrect in that there is a distinction between the individual power through the law of one and the combined or societal memory complex mind-body-spirit understanding of the law of one. In the first case, only the one individual, purified of all flaws, could move a mountain. In the case of mass understanding of the unity, each individual may contain an acceptable amount of distortion, and yet the mass mind could move mountains. The progress is normally from the understanding which you now seek to a dimension of understanding which is governed by the laws of love, and which seeks the laws of light. Those who are vibrating with the law of light seek the law of one. Those who vibrate with the law of one seek the law of foreverness. We cannot say what is beyond this disillusion of the unified self with all that there is. For we still seek to become all that there is, and still are we raw. Thus our paths go onward. Question. Was the pyramid then built by the mutual action of many? I am raw. The pyramids which we thought built were constructed thought forms, created by our social memory complex. Question. Then the rock was created in place rather than moved from some place else. Is that correct? I am raw. We built with everlasting rock the great pyramid, as you call it. Other of the pyramids were built with stone moved from one place to another. Question. What is everlasting rock? I am raw. If you can understand the concepts of thought forms, you will realize that the thought form is more regular in its distortion than the energy fields created by the materials in the rock, which has been created through thought form from thought to finite energy and beingness in your, shall we say, distorted reflection of the level of the thought form. May we answer you in any more helpful way? Question. This is rather trivial, but I was wondering why the pyramid was built with many blocks rather than creating the whole thing as one form created at once. I am raw. There is a law which we believe to be 
one of the more significant primal distortions of the law of one. That is the law of confusion. You have called this the law of free will. We wish to make a healing machine or time-space ratio complex which was as efficacious as possible. However, we did not desire to allow the mystery to be penetrated by the peoples in such a way that we became worshipped as builders of a miraculous pyramid. Thus it appears to be made and not thought. Question. Well, then you speak of the pyramid, the great pyramid, I assume as primarily a healing machine, and also you spoke of it as a device for initiation. Are these one and the same concept? I am raw. They are part of one complex of love, light, intent, sharing. To use the healing properly, it was important to have a purified and dedicated channel or energizer for the love light of the infinite creator to flow through. Thus, the initiatory method was necessary to prepare the mind, the body, and the spirit for service in the creator's work. The two are integral. Question. Does the shape of the pyramid have a function in the initiation process? I am raw. This is a large question. We feel that we shall begin and ask you to reevaluate and ask further at a later session. This somewhat, shall we say, informative point. To begin, there are two main functions of the pyramid in relation to the initiatory procedure. One has to do with the body. Before the body can be initiated, the mind must be initiated. This is the point at which most adepts at your present cycle find their mind-body-spirit complexes distorted from. When the character and personality that is the true identity of the mind has been discovered, the body then must be known in each and every way. Thus the various functions of the body need understanding and control with detachment. The first use of the pyramid, then, is going down into the pyramid for purpose of deprivation of sensory input, so that the body may, in a sense, be dead and another life begin. We advise at this time any necessary questions in a fairly rapid ending of the session. Have you any other query at this space-time? Question. The only question is, is there anything what we have done wrong, or that we could do to make the instrument more comfortable? I am raw. We scan this instrument. This instrument has been much aided by these precautions. We suggest only some attention to the neck, which seems in this body distortion to be distorted in the area of strength weakness. More support, therefore, to the neck area may be an aid. Question. Should we have the instrument drink the water from the chalice behind her head, or should we have her drink from another glass after we charge it with love? I am raw. That and only that chalice shall be the most beneficial as the virgin material living in the chalice accepts, retains, and responds to the love vibration activated by your beingness. I am raw. I will now leave this group rejoicing in the power and peace of the one creator, Adonai. Session 4, January 22, 1981 I am raw. I greet you in the love and light of the infinite creator. I communicate with you now. Question. When we finished the last session, I had asked a question that was too long to answer. It had to do with the shape of the pyramid, its relationship to the initiation. Is this the appropriate time to ask this question? I am raw. Yes, this is an appropriate time-space to ask that question. Question. Does the shape of the pyramid have an effect upon the initiation? I am raw. As we began the last session question, you have already recorded in your individual memory complex the first use of the shape having to do with the body complex initiation. The initiation of spirit was a more carefully designed type of initiation as regards the time-space ratios about which the entity to be initiated found itself. If you will picture with me the side of the so-called pyramid shape and mentally imagine this triangle cut into four equal triangles, you will find the intersection of the triangle which is at the first level on each of the four sides, forms a diamond in a plane which is horizontal. The middle of this plane is the appropriate place for the intersection of the energies streaming from the infinite dimensions, and the mind, body, spirit complexes of various interwoven energy fields. Thus it was designed that the one to be initiated 
would, by mind, be able to perceive and then channel this, shall we say, a gateway to intelligent infinity. This, then, was the second point of designing this specific shape. May we provide a further description of any kind to your query? Question. Yes. As I understand it, then, the initiate was to be on the center line of that pyramid, but at an altitude above the base as defined by the intersection of the four triangles made by dividing each side. Is that correct? I am raw. This is correct. Question. Then at this point, there is a focusing of energy that is extra-dimensional in regard to our dimension. Am I right? I am raw. You may use that vibratory sound complex. However, it is not totally and specifically correct. There are no extra dimensions. We would prefer the use of the term multidimensional. Question. Is the size of the pyramid a function of the effectiveness of the initiation? I am raw. Each size pyramid has its own point of streaming in of intelligent infinity. Thus, a tiny pyramid that can be placed below a body or above the body will have specific and various effects depending upon the placement of the body in relationship to the entrance point of intelligent infinity. For the purpose of initiation, the size needed to be large enough to create the impression of towering size so that the entrance point of multidimensional intelligent infinity would completely pervade and fill the channel, the entire body being able to rest in this focused area. Furthermore, it was necessary for healing purposes that both channel and the one to be healed be able to rest within that focus point. Question. Is the large pyramid of Giza still usable for this purpose, or is it no longer functional? I am raw. That, like many of the other pyramid structures, is like the piano out of tune. It, as this instrument would express it, plays the tune, but oh so poorly. The disharmony jangles the sensitivity. Only the ghost of the streaming still remains due to the shifting of the streaming points, which is in turn due to the shifting electromagnetic field of your planet, due also to the discordant vibratory complex of those who have used the initiatory and healing place for less compassionate purposes. Question. Would it be possible to build a pyramid and properly align it and use it today from the materials that we have available? I am raw. It is quite possible for you to build a pyramid structure. The material used is not critical, merely the ratios of time-space complexes. However, the use of the structure for initiation and healing depends completely upon the inner disciplines of the channels attempting such work. Question. My question then would be, are there individuals incarnate upon the planet today who would have the inner discipline to using your instructions, construct and initiate in a pyramid they built. Is this within the limits of what any one on the planet today can do, or is there no one available for this? I am raw. There are people, as you call them, who are able to take this calling at this nexus. However, we wish to point out once again that the time of the pyramid, as you would call it, is past. It is indeed a timeless structure. However, the streaming from the universe were, at that time we attempted to aid the planet, those which required a certain understanding of purity. This understanding was, as the streaming revolved, and all things evolve, chained to a more enlightened view of purity. Thus, there are those among your people at this time whose purity is already one with intelligent infinity. Without the use of structures, healer, patient can gain healing. May we further speak to some specific point? Question. Is it possible for you to instruct in those healing techniques if we could make available an individual who had the native ability? I am raw. It is possible. We must add that many systems of teach learning, the healing patient nexus, are proper given the various mind, body, spirit complexes. We asked your imagination to consider the relative simplicity of the mind in the earlier cycle and the less distorted but often overly complex views and thought-spirit process of the same mind-body-spirit complexes after many incarnations. We also ask your imagination to conceive of those who have chosen the distortions of service and have removed their mind-body-spirit complexes from one dimension to another, 
thus bringing with them in totally latent form many skills and understanding which more closely match the distortions of the healing patient processes. Question. I would very much like to continue investigation into the possibility of this healing process, but I'm a little lost as to where to begin. Can you tell me where my first step would be? I am raw. I cannot tell you what to ask. I may suggest that you consider that somewhat complex information just given and thus discover several avenues of inquiry. There is one health, as you call it, in your polarized environment, but there are several significantly various distortions of types of mind-body-spirit complexes. Each type must pursue its own learned teaching in this area. Question. Would you say, then, that the first step would be to find an individual with ability brought with him into this incarnation. Is this correct? I am raw. This is correct. Question. Once I have selected an individual to perform the healing, it would be helpful to receive instruction from you. Is this possible? I am raw. This is possible given the distortion of vibratory sound complexes. Question. I am assuming then that the selected individual would be one who is very much in harmony with the law of one. Even though he may not have any intellectual understanding of it, he should be living at the law of one. I am raw. This is both correct and incorrect. The first case, that being correctness, would apply to one such as the questioner himself, who has the distortions toward healing, as you call it. The incorrectness, which shall be observed, is the healing of those whose activities in your space-time illusion do not reflect the law of one, but whose ability has found its pathway to the intelligent infinity regardless of the plane of existence from which this distortion is found. Question. I'm a little confused. I partially understand you, but I'm not sure that I fully understand you. Could you restate that in another way? I am raw. I can restate that in many ways. Given this instrument's knowledge of your vibratory sound complex, I will strive for a shorter distortion at this time. Two kinds there are who can heal. Those such as yourself who, having the innate distortion towards knowledge giving of the law of one, can heal but do not. And those who, having the same knowledge, but showing no significant distortions toward the law of one in mind, body, or spirit, yet and nevertheless, have opened a channel to the same ability. The point being that there are those who, without proper training, shall we say, nevertheless heal. It is a further item of interest that those whose life does not equal their work may find some difficulty in absorbing the energy of intelligent infinity and thus become quite distortions in such a way as to cause disharmony in themselves and others and perhaps even find it necessary to cease the healing activity. Therefore, those of the first type, those who seek to serve and are willing to be trained in thought, word, and action, are those who will be able to comfortably maintain the distortion towards service in the area of healing. Question. Then would it be possible for you to train us in healing awareness? I am raw. It is possible. Question. Will you train us? I am raw. We will. Question. I have no idea how long this would take. Is it possible for you to give a synopsis of the program of training required? I have no knowledge of what questions to ask at this point. I am raw. We consider your request for information, for as you noted, there are a significant number of vibratory sound complexes which can be used in sequence to train the healer. The synopsis is a very appropriate entry that you might understand what is involved. Firstly, the mind must be known to itself. This is perhaps the most demanding part of the healing work. If the mind knows itself, then the most important aspect of healing has occurred. Consciousness is the microcosm of the law of one. The second part has to do with the discipline of the body complex. In the streamings reaching your planet at this time, these understandings and disciplines have to do with the balance between love and wisdom in the use of the body in its natural function. The third area is the spiritual, and in this area the first two disciplines are connected through the attainment of contact with intelligent infinity. Question. 
I believe I have a little idea of the accomplishment of the first step. Can you elaborate a little bit on the other two steps, which I am not at all familiar with? I am raw. Imagine the body. Imagine the more dense aspects of the body. Proceed therefrom to the very finest knowledge of energy pathways which revolve and cause the body to be energized. Understand that all natural functions of the body have all aspects from dense to fine and can be transmuted to what you may call sacramental. This is a brief investigation of the second area. To speak of the third, if you will, imagine the function of the magnet. The magnet has two poles. One reaches up, the other goes down. The function of the spirit is to integrate the upreaching yearning of the mind-body energy with the downpouring and streaming of infant intelligence. This is a brief explication of the third area. Question. Then would this training program involve specific things to do, specific instructions and exercises? I am raw. We are not at this time incarnate among your people. Thus we can guide and attempt to specify, but we cannot, by example, show. And this is a handicap. However, there should indeed be fairly specific exercises of mind, body, and spirit during the teach-learning process we offer. It is to be once more iterated that healing is but one distortion of the law of one. To reach an undistorted understanding of that law, it is not necessary to heal or to show any manifestations, but only to exercise the discipline of understanding. We would ask that one or two more questions be the ending of the session. Question. My objective is primarily to discover more of the Law of One, and it would be very helpful to discover the te techniques of healing. I am aware of your problems with respect to free will. Can you state the Law of One and the Laws of Healing to me? I am raw. The Law of One though beyond the limitation of name, as you call vibratory sound complexes, may be approximated by stating that all things are one, that there is no polarity, no right or wrong, no disharmony, but only identity. All is one, and that one is love-light, light-love, the infinite creator. One of the primal distortions of the law of one is that of healing. Healing occurs when a mind-body-spirit complex realizes, deep within itself, the law of one, that is, that there is no disharmony, no imperfection, that all is complete, the whole body imperfect. Thus, the intelligent infinity within this mind-body-spirit complex reforms the illusion of body, mind or spirit, to a form congruent with the law of one. The healer acts as energizer or catalyst for this completely individual process. One item which may be of interest is that a healer asking to learn must take the distortion understood as responsibility for that ask receiving. This is an honor duty which must be carefully considered in free will before the asking. Question. I assume that we should continue tomorrow. Raw. I am raw. Your assumption is correct unless you feel a certain question is necessary. This instrument is nurtured by approximately this length of work. Question. I have one more short question. Is this instrument capable of two of these sessions per day, or should we remain with one? I am raw. This instrument is capable of two sessions a day. However, she must be encouraged to keep her bodily complex strong by the ingestion of your foodstuff to an extent which exceeds this instrument's normal intake of your foodstuff, this due to the physical material which we use to speak. Further, this instrument's activity must be monitored to prevent overactivity, for this activity is equivalent to a strenuous working day on the physical level. If these admonishments are considered, the two sessions would be possible. We do not wish to deplete this instrument. Question. Thank you, Raw. I am Raw. I leave you in the love and light of the one infinite intelligence, which is the Creator. Go forth rejoicing in the power and the peace of the One. Adonai. Session 5, January 23, 1981 I am Ra. I greet you in the love and light of the infinite Creator. I communicate now. Question. The last time we communicated, we were speaking of the learning of healing. 
It is my impression from what you gave to us in the earlier session that it is necessary to first purify the self by certain disciplines and exercise. Then in order to heal a patient, it is necessary by example and possibly certain exercise to create the mental configuration in the patient that allows him to heal himself. Am I correct? I am raw. Although your learn understanding distortion is essentially correct, your choice of vibratory sound complex is not entirely as accurate as this language allows. It is not by example that the healer does the working. The working exists in and of itself. The healer is only the catalyst. Much as this instrument has the catalyst necessary to provide the channel for our words, yet by example or exercise of any kind can take no thought for this working. The healing working is congruent in that it is a form of channeling some distortions of the intelligent infinity. Question. We have decided to accept, if offered, the honor, duty of learning, teaching the healing process. I would ask as to the first step which we should accomplish in becoming effective healers. I am Ra. We shall begin with the first of the three teachings. We begin with the mental learn teaching necessary for the contact with the intelligent infinity. The prerequisite of mental work is the ability to retain silence of self at a steady state when required by the self. The mind must be open like a door. The key is silence. Within the door lies a hierarchical construction you may liken under geography and in some ways geometry, for the hierarchy is quite regular, bearing inner relationships. To begin to master the concept of mental discipline, it is necessary to examine the self. The polarity of your dimension must be internalized. Where you find patience within your mind, you must consciously find the corresponding impatience and vice versa. Each thought a being has, has in its turn an antithesis. The discipline of the mind involve, first of all, identifying both these things of which you approve and those things of which you disapprove within yourself, and then balancing each and every positive and negative charge with its equal. The mind contains all things, therefore you must discover the completeness within yourself. The second mental discipline is acceptance, and the completeness within your consciousness. It is not for a being of polarity in the physical consciousness to pick and choose among attributes, thus building the roles that cause blockages and confusions in the already distorted mind complex. Each acceptance smooths part of the many distortions that the faculty you call judgment engenders. The third discipline of the mind is a repetition of the first, but with the gaze outward toward the fellow entities that it meets. In each entity there exists completeness. Thus the ability to understand each balance is necessary. When you view patience, you are responsible for mirroring in your mental understanding patience, impatience. When you view impatience, it is necessary for your mental configuration of understanding to be impatience, patience. We use this as a simple example. Most configurations of mind have many facets, an understanding of either self-polarities, or what you would call other self-polarities, can and must be understood as subtle work. The next step is the acceptance of the other self-polarities, which mirrors the second step. These are the first four steps of learning mental discipline. The fifth step involves observing the geographical and geometrical relationships and ratios of the mind. The other mind, the mass mind, and the infinite mind. The second area of learned teaching is the study understanding of the body complexes. It is necessary to know your body well. This is a matter of using the mind to examine how the feelings, the biases, what you would call the emotions, affect various portions of the body complex. It shall be necessary to both understand the bodily polarity and to accept them, repeating in a chemical, physical manifestation the work you have done upon the mind, bethinking the consciousness. The body is a creature of the mind's creation. It has its biases. The biological bias must be first completely understood and then the opposite bias allowed to find full expression and understanding. Again, the process of acceptance of the body as a balanced as well as polarized individual may then be accomplished. It is then the task to extend this understanding to the bodies of the other selves whom you will meet. The simplest example of this is the understanding that each biological male is female. 
each biological female is male. This is a simple example. However, in almost every case wherein you are attempting the understanding of the body of self or other self, you will again find that the most subtle discernment is necessary in order to fully grasp the polarity complexes involved. At this time, we would suggest closing the description until the next time of work so that we may devote time to the third area commensurate with its importance. We can answer a query if it is a short one before we leave this instrument. Question. Is the instrument comfortable? Is there anything that we can do to increase the comfort of the instrument? I am raw. The candle could be rotated clockwise approximately 10 degrees each session to improve the flow of spiral energy through the beans receiving mechanism. This particular configuration is well otherwise. But we ask that the objects described and used be centered with geometric care and checked from time to time. Also, that they not be exposed to that space-time in which work is not of importance. I am raw. I leave this instrument in the love and light of the one infinite Creator. Go forth rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one Creator, Adonai. Session 6, January 24, 1981 Raw. I am raw. I greet you in the love and light of the infinite Creator I communicate now. Question. We would like to continue the material from yesterday. I am raw. This is well with us. We proceed now with the third part of the teach learning concerning the development of the energy powers of healing. The third area is the spiritual complex which embodies the fields of force and consciousness which are the least distorted of your mind, body, spirit complex. The exploration and balancing of your spirit complex is indeed the longest and most subtle part of your learned teaching. We have considered the mind as a tree. The mind controls the body. With the mind single-pointed, balanced, and aware, the body comfortable in whatever bias and distortions make it appropriately balanced for that instrument, the instrument is then ready to proceed with the greater work. That is the work of wind and fire, the spiritual body energy field as a pathway or channel. When body and mind are receptive and open, then the spirit can become a functioning shuttle or communicator from the entity's individual energy or will upwards and from the streaming of the creative fire and wind downwards. The healing ability, like all other, what this instrument would call paranormal abilities, is affected by the opening of a pathway or shuttle into intelligent infinity. There are many upon your plane who have a random hole or gateway in their spirit energy field, sometimes created by the ingestion of chemicals such as what this instrument would call LSD, who are able, randomly and without control, to tap into energy sources. They may or not be entities who wish to serve. The purpose of carefully and consciously opening this channel is to serve in a more dependable way, in a more commonplace or usual way, as seen by the distortion complex of the healer. To others, they may appear to be miracles, to the one who has carefully opened the door to an intelligent infinity, this is ordinary, this is commonplace, this is as it should be. The life experience becomes somewhat transformed. The great work goes on. At this time, we feel these exercises suffice for your beginning. We will, at a future time, when you feel you have accomplished that which is set before you, begin to guide you into a more precise understanding of the function and use of this gateway into the experience of healing. Question. I think this might be an appropriate time to include a little more background on yourself, possibly information having to do with where you came from prior to your involvement with planet Earth, if this is possible. I am raw. I am with the social memory complex of which I am a part, one of those who voyaged outward from another planet within your own solar system, as this entity would call it. The planetary influences was that you call Venus. We are a race old in your measure. When we were at the sixth dimension, our physical beings were what you would call golden. We were tall and somewhat delicate. Our physical body complex covering, which you call the entugment, had a golden luster. In this form, we decided to come among your people. Your peoples at the time were much unlike us in physical appearance, as you might call it. We thus did not mix well with the population and were obviously other than they. Thus our visit was relatively short, for we found ourselves in the hypocritical position of being acclaimed as other than your other selves. 
This was the time during which we built the structures in which you showed interest. Question. How did you journey from Venus to this planet? I am raw. We used thought. Question. Would it be possible to have taken one of the people of this planet at that time and placed him on Venus? Would he have survived? Were conditions on Venus hospitable? I am raw. The third density conditions are not hospitable to the life forms of your planet. The fifth and sixth dimensions of that planetary sphere are quite conducive to growing, learning, teaching. Question. How were you able to make a transition from Venus? Did you have to change your dimensions to walk upon the Earth? I am raw. You will remember the exercise of the wind. The disillusion into nothingness is the disillusion into unity, for there is no nothingness. From the sixth dimension we are capable of manipulating by thought the intelligent infinity present in each particle of light or distorted light, so that we are able to clothe ourselves in a replica visible in the third density of our mind-body-spirit complex in the sixth density. We were allowed this experiment by the council which guards this planet. Question. Where is this council located? I am raw. This council is located in the octave or eighth dimension of the planet Saturn taking its place in an area which you understand in third dimension terms as the rings. Question. Are there other people such as you found on Earth and any other planets in our solar system? I am raw. Do you request space-time present information or space-time continuum information? Question. Both. I am raw. At one time space in which is your past there was a population of third-density beings upon a planet which dwelt within your solar system. There are various names by which this planet has been named. The vibratory sound complex most usually used by your people is Maldek. These entities, destroying their planetary sphere, thus were forced to find room for themselves upon this third density, which is the only one in your solar system at their time-space present, which was hospitable and capable of offering the lessons necessary to decrease their mind-body-spirit distortions with respect to Law of One. Question. How did they come here? I am raw. They came through the process of harvest and were incarnated through the process of incarnation from your higher spheres within this density. Question. How long ago did this happen? I am raw. I am having difficulty communicating with this instrument. We must deepen our state. This occurred approximately 500,000 of your years ago. Question. Is all of the Earth population then originally from Maldek? I am raw. This is a new line of questioning and deserves a place of its own. The ones who were harvested to your spheres from the sphere known before its dissolution as other names, but to your people as Maldek, incarnated many within your Earth's surface rather than upon it. The population of your planet contains many various groups harvested from other second dimension and cycled third dimension spheres. You are not all one race or background or beginning. The experience you share is unique to this time-space continuum. Question. I think that it would be appropriate to discover how the Law of One acts in this transfer of beings to our planet and the action of harvest. I am raw. The Law of One states simply that all things are one, that all beings are one. There are certain behaviors and thought forms consonant with the understanding and practice of this law. Those who, finishing a cycle of experience, demonstrating grades of distortion of that understanding of thought and action, will be separated by their own choice into the vibratory distortion most comfortable to their mind, body, spirit complexes. This process is guarded or watched by those nurturing beings who, being very close to the law of one in their distortion, nevertheless move towards active service. Thus the illusion is created of light, or more properly but less understandably, light love. This in varying degrees of intensity. The spirit complex of each harvested entity moves along the line of light until the light grows too glaring, at which time the entity stops. This entity may have barely reached third density or may be very, very close to the ending of the third density light love distortion vibratory complex. Nevertheless, those who fall within this octave of intensifying light love then experience a major cycle during which there are opportunities for the discovery of the distortions which are inherent in each entity and therefore the lessening of these distortions. Question. 
What is the length in our years of one of these cycles? I am Ra. One major cycle is approximately 25,000 of your years. There are three cycles of this nature during which those who have progressed may be harvested at the end of three major cycles. That is approximately between 75 and 76,000 of your years. All are harvested regardless of their progress, for during that time the planet itself has moved through the useful part of that dimension and begins to cease being useful for the lower levels of vibration within that density. Question. What is the position of this planet with respect to the progression of cycles at this time? I am Ra. This sphere is at this time in fourth dimension vibration. Its material is quite confused due to the society memory complexes embedded in its consciousness. It has not made an easy transition to the vibration which beckon. Therefore, it will be fetched with some inconvenience. Question. Is this inconvenience imminent within a few years? I am Ra. This inconvenience or disharmonious vibratory complex has begun several of your years in your past. It shall continue unabated for a period of approximately 30 of your years. Question. After this period of 30 years, I am assuming that this will be a fourth density planet. Is this correct? I am Ra. This is so. Question. Is it possible to estimate what percent of the present population will inhabit the fourth density planet? I am raw. The harvesting is not yet. Thus, estimation is meaningless. Question. Does the fact that we are in this transition period now have anything to do with the reason that you have made your information available to the population? I am raw. We have walked among your people. We remember. We remember sorrow, have seen much. We have searched for an instrument of the proper parameters of distortion in mind, body, spirit complex, and supporting an understanding of mind-body-spirit complexes to accept this information with minimal distortion and maximal desire to serve for some of your years? The answer, in short, is yes. However, we wish you to know that in our memory we thank you. Question. The disc-shaped craft that we call UFOs, some have been said to have come from the planet Venus. Would any of these be your craft? I am Ra. We have used crystals for many purposes. The craft of which you speak have not been used by us in your space-time present memory complex. However, we have used crystals in the bell shape in the past of your illusion. Question. How many years in the past did you use the bell-shaped craft to come to Earth? I am Ra. We visited your people 18,000 of your years ago and did not land again 11,000 years ago. Question. Photographs of bell-shaped craft and reports of contact of such from Venus exist from less than 30 years ago. Do you have any knowledge of these reports? I am Ra. We have knowledge of oneness with these forays of your time-space present. We are no longer of Venus. However, there are thought forms created among your people from our time of walking among you. The memory and thought forms created, therefore, are a part of your society memory complex. This mass consciousness, as you may call it, creates the experience once more for those who request such experience. The present Venus population is no longer six density. Question. Do any of the UFOs presently report this time come from other planets, or do you have this knowledge? I am Ra. I am one of the members of the Confederation of Planets in the service of the Infinite Creator. There are approximately 53 civilizations, comprising approximately 500 planetary conscious complex in this confederation. This confederation contains those from your own planet who have attained dimensions beyond your third. It contains planetary entities within your solar system, and it contains planetary entities from other galaxy. Ra often uses the word galaxy, where we would say planetary system. This meaning is listed in the unabridged dictionary, but is not in common use. It is a true configuration, confederation, in that its members are not alike, but allied in service according to law of one. Question. Do any of them come here at this time in spacecraft in the past, say, 30 years? I am raw. We must state that this information is unimportant. If you will understand this, we feel that the information may be acceptably offered. The law of one is what we are here to express. However, we will speak upon this subject. Each planetary entity which wishes to appear within your third dimension of space-time distortion requests permission to break quarantine, as you may call it, and appear to your people. 
the reason and purpose for this appearance is understood and either accepted or rejected. There have been many as fifteen of the Confederation entities in your skies at any one time. The others are available to you through thought. At present there are seven which are operating with craft in your density. Their purpose were very simple, to allow those entities on your planet to become aware of infinity, which is often best expressed to the uninformed as the mysterious or unknown. Question. I am fully aware that you are primarily interested in disseminating information concerning Law of One. However, it is my judgment, and I could be wrong, that in order to disseminate this material, it will be necessary to include questions such as the one I have just asked. If this is not the objective, then I could limit my questions to the application of the Law of One. But I understand that at this time it is the objective to widely disseminate this material. Is this correct? I am raw. This perception is only slightly distorted in your understanding and learning. We wish you to proceed as you deem proper, and that is your place. We, in giving this information, find our distortion of understanding of our purpose to be not only of the offering of information, but the weighing of it according to our distorted perceptions of its relative importance. Thus, you will find our statements at times to be those which imply that a question is unimportant. This is due to our perception that a given question is unimportant. Nevertheless, unless the question contains the potential for answer giving, which may infringe upon free will, we offer our answers. Question. Thank you very much. We do not want to overtire the instrument. We have gone considerably over our normal working time. Could you tell me what condition the instrument is in? I am raw. The instrument is bound due to your care. However, her physical vehicle is growing stiff. Question. In that case, perhaps we should continue at a later time. I am raw. I leave you in the love and light of the one infinite creator. Go forth rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one creator, Adonai.